Hey, Olive, Arlo, and Frank. Grandpop here at, uh, I think it's called Wingate Park. It's the rec center in Jacksonville Beach. They have all these baseball and softball fields. Tried to do this on a weekend one time, silly me. I mean, it was just packed with people, but now there's essentially nobody here. So I'm in the middle of a hike and I figured I'd go into this quiet area and take a little rest and read the Bible with you. We're in the Net Bible Reader's Edition. I don't know if you can see that, but today we're going to talk about Genesis chapter 12. It's an amazing chapter. I mentioned the last time it's a seminal chapter in the Bible. We see two things. We, we see Abraham blessed because he obeyed God. And then we immediately see him disobey God. I did a, a, a video recently called If Your Heroes Are, are Perfect, They Aren't Human. Abraham is a, a perfect example. So now as we get into the life of Abraham, let's let's look at that. Let's look at Abraham, the founder basically of of the not just the Jewish race. He's also the um the Arabs, the Mus you know, a lot of the Muslim world, the Arab world is descended from him. And um two of the great world traditions. Three, actually, three. If you if you count, I mean, I mean, I'm not a physical descendant of Abraham, but through him, three of the great world religions were founded, and and he's titular in in all those religions. So let's take a look at this. Now the Lord said to Abram, and remember his name at this point in time is Abram. It's going to be changed. The Lord said to Abram, go out from your country, your relatives and your father's household to the land that I will show you. Then I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. And I will make your name great so that you will exemplify divine blessing. This is really important what I'm getting ready to say. I will bless those who bless you but the one who treats you lightly, I must curse. So collectively, people who, who curse him, will be cursed, but you don't have to curse him. But it says those, not the singular, it's in, in the multiple. Those who bless you, I will bless. I'm convinced that one reason that the, the United States has been as prosperous as it has been is because we've stood by Israel. There's a lot of people who disagree with that, but, and I only have anecdotal evidence. Look at my logical fallacies series, and it talks about that. But it seems to me that whenever we have a government that leans towards the Palestinians and, and the Iranians and people like that who are definitely opposed to Israel, that economically we don't prosper. And, and but when we have a government that leans towards Israel that we do prosper. Like I say, that's anecdotal, but it just seems that, that it happens that way every time. And even though it's anecdotal, that doesn't prove that it's true, but I'm always gonna bless Israel. I don't care what my government or any church that I might be affiliated with says, I'm gonna bless Israel. 
says, I will bless you, those who bless you, but the one who treats you lightly I must curse. And all the families of the earth will bless one another by your name. So Abram left just as the Lord had told him to do, and Lot went with him. So now we see why we saw the genealogy of, of Lot also, because he's going to play a big part in this story in the next few chapters. Now Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran, and Abram took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all the possessions they had accumulated, and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they left for the land of Canaan. They entered the land of Canaan. Abram traveled through the land as far as the oak tree of Moreh at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your descendants, I will give this land. So Abram built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. Then he moved from there to the hill country east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on his west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and worshiped the Lord. Abram continually journeyed by stages down to the Negev. So the Negev is the stark desert, the very southern end of, of modern day Israel. It's where the Dead Sea is. So he's on his way down there and he's still in the promised land. He's where he's supposed to be. What is then called the land of Canaan. But here's when he throws a monkey wrench into, into God's plan. There was a famine in the land to Abram. There was a famine in the land. Now, he was, wasn't told to leave if there was a famine in the land. He was told to go there. You know, await further orders, buddy. There was a famine in the land, so Abram went down to Egypt to stay for a while because the famine was severe. As he approached Egypt, he said to his wife Sarai, Look, I know that you are a beautiful woman. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but will keep you alive. So tell them that you are my sister, so that it may go well for me because of you, and my life will be spared on account of you. He had a lot of faith in God, enough faith to, to leave Haran and, and, and go to the land of Canaan, but he didn't have enough faith to, to figure that God could provide for them even in the famine in Canaan and that now he made this mistake he doesn't have faith that God can protect him from being killed by the Egyptians when a Abram entered Egypt the Egyptians saw the woman was very beautiful so he's right about that when Pharaoh's officials saw her they they praised her to, to Pharaoh so Abram's wife was taken into the household of Pharaoh and he did treat Abram well on account of her. Abram received sheep and cattle, male donkeys, male servants, female servants, female donkeys, and camels. So, so he's, he was a pretty wealthy guy anyway, but now he's fabulously rich because the ruler of Egypt is giving him a, a dowry. Like, here's a, a gift for giving me your sister. But the Lord struck Pharaoh and his household with severe diseases because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So Pharaoh summoned Abram and said, what is this you have done to me? Why didn't you tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister so that I took her to be my wife? Here is your wife, take her and go. Pharaoh gave his men orders about Abram, and so they expelled him along with his wife and all his possessions. So, so he didn't even get to stay there, but he had all this stuff now. And he took his stuff and, and started back home. And next time we're gonna look at some strife that happens when they get back up to the Negev between Lot and Abram, um, the herdsmen actually of Lot and the herdsmen of Abram. There's not enough land. 
They have to figure out what to do. Till then, peace out.